Hi, and welcome to Heroes 2, the making of the game. So today we're going to be discussing the game engine. What does that mean? We're about to find out. Welcome everyone to Heroes 2, the making of a game. Today we're talking about the game engine. What exactly is a game engine? I didn't know, but we're all about to find out a little bit more. So we want to thank um, Julio and Jader for coming and we just want to get right into this. Jader, explain to me what you do. Right, so what I do is what people call in the, in the tech industry solution architecture, right? So what that involves is looking at uh, different pieces of technology and how we can bring them all together to make a dream come true. So, you know, in this case, Heroes the Game, Pastor Sam many years ago, you know, decided that he wanted to create a Bible game. He came to me with some very rough drawings. And from that, we, uh, what I do essentially is sit down with him and try to understand what he's trying to achieve and how we can use technology to, to make that a reality. Okay, so the game engine, is basically the the thing that makes the game become a reality, right? Yeah, it's it's really it's really the engine is is the perfect analogy here, right? It's what makes the car move. So without the engine, you can't go anywhere. The game engine is exactly that. It's what make the game what makes what makes the game run essentially on on people's devices, and and it's what we we then use to program all the features that we want, right? So it, it provides us with you know the the basic functionality that you need to create a game. Okay, so like, cause you know, I know in other episodes of um, the making of the game, we're going to talk about like, I guess the rest of the car, <laughs> you could call it, um, <laughs> like how we make it look pretty on the outside, the working pieces on the inside. But today we're going to talk about this engine and how, how do you pick this game engine? So I believe there are different types of engines out there. There's like the open ones that you don't have to pay for. And then there's the paid versions of it. So help me figure out like what is the differences between them and how do you select which one you're going to use? Right. So I think for us, when we when we were looking at all the possible alternatives out there, um, and it's worth noting that the first version of Heroes actually used a completely different engine than the second version. So we took some of the learnings from the first version as well. Uh, but I think the, there's, as you correctly said, there's lots of different considerations. So it's not just the technology and what the engine can do, so how powerful it is, if, if you will. Uh, but it's also about, um, you know, the, the license model, um, how much it costs, because a project has constraints, right? So you can't just, you know, buy a game engine that costs millions and say, we're going to run with that. You know, it might be the most amazing game engine, but it becomes prohibitive at that point. So we wanted to choose something that had the power that we needed, but at the same time, wouldn't limit us in the future and what we can do. So very flexible, um, but at the same time, wasn't prohibitively expensive. So all of those things were a consideration. We looked at pretty much all of them when we were, you know, to choosing one. Uh, we looked at many different alternatives. Okay. And, and so we settled on one. Yes. And the name of it is, drum roll. Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine. <laughs> okay. Now, is Unreal Engine a paid one or a free one? It's it's both, funnily enough. It's a, it's a weird one because they have, they are open source. So that means that anyone can go in and edit the code, modify the code, look at it, learn from it. Um, so you it, that means very flexible, right? So we're not tied into using it in a specific way. Uh, in fact, Julio has uh, our you know lead developer. He has on multiple instances modified the code because he's found bugs on it, and then he goes in and modifies it instead of waiting for support from a company that may or may not reply. So open source has a lot of uh, advantages in that regard. But um, in terms of licensing model, Unreal operates on a, on a model where it is free up until uh, you start making money. And uh, after you start making money, th there's a threshold uh, of how much money you make. And then you start paying a percentage of those proceeds to, to, to the Unreal Engine uh, Corporation. So if you offer your game for free, you don't ever get charged? That's correct. Yes. Excellent. So um, total like plug for Heroes 2, because that's what this is all about anyways. Heroes 2 will always be free. There will never be ads. We will never charge you. Heroes 2 will always be free. So 
you're welcome. Um, Cause I know I hate the little pop-ups trying to get me to like buy stuff in games. And I'm gonna fully admit to having like been suckered into that in the past. Like I like buy stuff. Um, so I'm thrilled that I can get the effects without paying for them. So um, how you were just saying that um, Julio, you, you interact with the Unreal Engine, you interact with the environment. How do yeah. you do that? Can you explain that a little bit? Um, so first of all, in, uh, there are companies out there principally, uh, mainly in the past that they created their own engine, right? But the truth is, uh, there are lots of MIT essays and, you know, any graduations and post graduations, uh, knowledge that is united in, in that today are united in many places. And the place that we are using is a real engine. Which, is, which has all these free for us. If I studied all my life long, I wouldn't ever get 1% of all, that, of all that knowledge, right? So that's uh, how we use it. And that's what I have in, in the background when I am using it. So it's um, a reunion, a gathering of many uh, human beings, many smart ones that are sharing their work with me. Or, whoever is using this engine. So what I do is getting their knowledge, getting the connecting dots of their work uh, to fulfill our needs. And well, openly speaking, that's what I do. That's how I interact with the engine. Well, it, it sounds like open source is quite a fantastic concept because you are able to kind of harness the power almost of a community um, to be able to help a project continue on. Um, if you were to pick, would you pick a different game engine or would like if other people were thinking about creating a game similar, would you recommend Unreal Engine? Would you encourage them to find something else? What would you say are the top reasons why you would suggest this one? Well, I would absolutely um, advise for Unreal Engine because or recommend Unreal Engine because it works both for uh, uh, simple developers, uh, starting developers, up to, up until senior developers. You have uh, many visual pl programming platforms where you literally connect boxes and dots, uh, like with words. You you get, for example, a word, a number, a two. Then you have the box with a plus sign, and then you get the two and get the result four. It's as simple as that. But also, you can go a further step, writing code in what we were talking about in another talk, which is in C++, that connects to the world, which is open to you know cloud services, to security, to cryptography, to uh, uh, data safety, to analytics, to you know to the world that we know. Like everything. About. <laughs> Get exactly. everything. So I guess we should also put out there. This is not like a paid advertisement for. Um, for Unreal Engines. We just really, really love them. So we're just sharing our love of them. Um, and also, um, thank you for actually doing a plug there, Julio. We do want to encourage you guys to make sure you're following these channels that you're watching this on, because we do have other great videos coming out that are part of this whole um, the making of a game series, and that will be on there. Um, he is there with a with Jonas, um, who is one of our other developer um, team members. So, um, I guess, like for the for the last question, I would have is like for um, Jader, you can kind of like take this one here. For people who are interested in the concept of this, who like all this kind of like analytical, like trying to find these things, what would you say to those people watching, like, how can they get themselves into something like this? How do they, how do they become the next Jader? <laughs> right. So um, I think I, I, I'm very excited about the time that we live in because information is literally available to anyone with a computer and an internet connection, right? So information has become really democratized. And, and I always say this to people that are trying to learn programming. It can be daunting at the beginning because it might, it might seem like it's really, really complex, but there's so much information out there. There's so many tutorials. There's so many um, documentation. Like Julia said, there's a huge community, for example, for Unreal. Um, if you apply yourself and you, and you really love it and you're really passionate about it and that's something that you want to do, not only is it a wonderful career, but you can literally do it without going to university or without paying lots of money for courses. 
you can do all of it online and you can just find that information. Um, that's how I learned most of the things that I know and, and Judo as well. Um, so it, it really depends on your effort and, and just going out there and, and finding that information and studying it for yourself uh, and you can learn it. You know, I appreciate that because there are so many, like society is like moving so rapidly with so many of these kind of things. If you're in any kind of a tech thing, um, you're just constantly learning. So a lot of these yeah. skills are very much like we learn them as we go. Um, you can go to school and a month later, almost all your knowledge can be not obsolete, but it can feel that way. So you're absolutely right that just if you're interested in this, just pour yourself into it, learn as much as you can. Um, I'm constantly looking for classes and random things just so I can like up my knowledge because things change so rapidly. Yeah. Um, we just want to thank you all for coming. I'm sure we could have dug way deeper into this and got into a lot more technical terms. Um, but what we do know is that Unreal Engine is open source and it's fantastic. And it is the game engine that drove Heroes 2 into your phone. So um, we encourage you to, again, follow the channel that you're watching this on. Share this with anybody in your life who maybe is interested in gaming or into coding or any of those kind of things. And make sure that you download Heroes 2, the ultimate Bible trivia game, and start playing it today.